Good day, everybody. Hello, I'm Heather with The Painted Playground, and I get to teach women how to have fun with painting. And today we're all, we're talking about spring. We are talking about spring. Spring is here, it has sprung, and we are celebrating. And um, so I'm so glad you joined me. Thanks for um, tuning in. And go ahead when you join, uh, comment below and let me know where you're watching from. Give me a thumbs up to let me know you're here. And uh, we're gonna start painting. We're gonna jump right in. Um, we're painting some spring, a spring daffodil today. So um, I just wanna turn you around a little bit so you can check out uh, and get a little bit closer view of what we're doing and how we're doing it so you can then paint your own daffodil because I love painting, but uh, the whole point is for you to jump in and paint too. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Ashley. Um, and so I'm going to turn you guys around and give you a little bit better of a view and scoot you down a little bit. All right. So yeah, so I was out on a walk with uh, my daughter Zoe and we noticed the first daffodils springing up. So we were so excited. So tell me, um, has spring sprung where you are? Um, it definitely has here. We're starting to hear the birds singing. Uh, gosh, things are starting to green up. The snow is melting. I can still see a little bit of snow where I am, but um, things are definitely moving, starting to move and shake up. So super fun. I love this time of the year. Um, I hate to say that it's my favorite because I have favorites of every season. Um, hey, Melissa, but definitely um, it's one of my one of my favorite times of the year when stuff starts growing and popping up. So um, yeah, super exciting. So let's see. I've got my daffodil and what I want, the first step I wanted to do to get it going, I'm working on a smaller canvas today. This is a um, out of a sketchbook of mine, mixed media paper, and I'm just going to lay down some color. And I'm starting with that yellow, because what I like to do a lot in our paintings is layer, layer, layer. I love to have fun and layer on the paint in different ways. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm starting with that beautiful color of yellow from our daffodil. And I'm just using a one inch brush, dipping it into the paint. I'm not worried about how it's going on. As a matter of fact, you know, the first layers are so much fun because you can really just slap it on, smush it around, and have fun with it. And this is kind of where you can loosen up on the canvas. So I just want to get that paint everywhere. Go. All right, and I'm gonna let that dry. So that's my first layer. Hey, Katie. What am I doing today? I am painting the spring daffodil. It's a gorgeous flower that comes up in my area every year. And so I thought, what better way to celebrate spring than celebrate the daffodil? So I've got my first layer. I'm going to let that dry. And I want to show you. So I've got several layers. I started with that yellow layer. And the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make your own tracer. So, uh, you know, it's a simple way to get your drawing onto the canvas. And I like to use, I paint on all kinds of paper and a good one for a tracer is a heart, a thicker paper. Um, you could use a cardstock. This is a piece of mixed media paper. I like to play around on things. And if I don't like it, I like to cut it up and just use it as scratch paper or um, sometimes I'll then just keep painting on this and use it in different ways in my canvases. Um, so I'm just using a scrap of that today and I want to show you, I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to flip it over and I cut it to the size of the paper that I'm using for my daffodil just so I can um, kind of get the uh, proportions right. It kind of helps me. So this is one that I've already cut out and that I used, but I want to show you how you can trace, how you can draw your own. I think a lot of people are intimidated when it comes to drawing and I want to break it down for you and show you a step-by-step -step how you can draw your own flower so that you can use it as a tracer. Because for this technique, I really wanted to get that yellow to come through on the flower and rather than paint it on, I wanted it to come through from a layer. So that's why I went with a tracer today. 
So super simple. We're going to take it step by step painting our daffodil. So I'm just working with a regular pencil and first step is I'm going to paint or uh, draw that little round or oval shape right there. And you can really play around with this. I'm hoping you can see that. All right, let me know how that works for you. And then I'm going to, the second step, I'm going to do this little cone shape here. So I'm going to do a little arch there, and then I'm going to con connect it to that first center shape. And you can do a little that inner cone to make it look like that cone. And then I'm going to draw my first petal. My first petal is my big petal. Got my big petal. Let me throw this up there so you can see that. Okay. Hey Grace, good to see you Grace. And then I'm going to do my, my other two big petals. And you know, it's not about getting it perfect. It's about getting it down on the paper. You could practice this on a different sheet of paper. Um, and you know, then go and uh, do your final draft uh, when you're ready on your cardstock. So really, you know, I have a I have a um, a small sketchbook, and it's just my doodle book, and I will play around with shapes and um, you know different subject matter, and it's really about playing and kind of getting it down on the on the um, just getting it down out of your head and onto something, and then uh, then you can worry about you know making it better and better, and every time you do it, it gets easier and easier. Hey Melissa, so glad you're joining me. So I'm gonna do my stem. And I'm just going to swish that down. And then I'm going to give it some lead. Actually, I'm going to thicken this up. So we're just staying with really simple shapes. When you start to break it down into simple shapes, it makes it a whole lot easier. So I'm going to give it some leaves. So if spring is starting in your neck of the woods, let me know, what have you noticed? What's starting to happen in your space? So I'm just gonna cut this out. And then we will have it for our dandelion, or our daffodil. I am seeing dandelions come up as well, which I love dandelions too. I know a lot of people think of them as weeds, but the birds need all the flowers. So now I'm just cutting around my shape, going up the stem, and I'm not getting it perfect. Kind of going around my drawing, but if you wanted to get a more exact cut, you could always use an X-Acto knife or even like a smaller pair of scissors that are made for paper. That's not our intention. We just want to get the general shape. See, I think one of the things, uh, you know, I see a lot of beginners or people that have been away, have taken a break from painting and they come back to it and super worried about making a mistake and doing something wrong and not liking it, whatever they're making. And I think one of the first things we need to do as creatives is to accept that mistakes are gonna happen. Um, and we can always, um, sorry, I'm so focused on my cutting here. I'm having a hard time talking. So mistakes are going to happen. It's just cre as creatives, that's that's kind of part of the process. And so once we can accept that as part of the process, when things don't go as we thought, we can take a different approach in how we deal with them. So I think that's probably the first thing 
is to just accept that those mistakes and being a creative gets, you know, it's part of being a creative and we get messy and uh, it can be part of the fun. Hey, Kiva. So I've got my yellow background. I've got my daffodil cut out. This is a great one too, Kiva. Um, you've got kids at home. Uh, you could play around with this and I bet the uh, daffodils are coming up like crazy around your house. Um, all right, so now I'm going to take, let's see, what did I do? Here we go. I've got a little micron pen, but you can use any, um, like a Sharpie, um, a finer tip would be good for this, for this one. You could even uh, outline it with whatever you have at home. I know we're all dealing with limited supplies right now, so work with what you have. And that's always my mantra, but certainly right now especially. So now I'm gonna just trace around my little leaves. Make sure you can see that. And my stem, work my way up. And I realize I kind of just plop this down, but I, um, you can play around and move your tracer around to see where you want it to be on your canvas. I definitely just kind of plopped it down there. But it's kind of fun to play around and see where you want the composition to be. My hands are totally shaky this morning. They usually are anyway, but right now they are really shaky. I feel like I did not have enough to eat. Let's see, just go around these upper petals. And what's really neat about this is this is my drawing. This is my mark that I'm making on my canvas. So I messed up down here, what would some people would consider a mess up. I'm gonna go with it, it's okay. I'm layering on more, pa um, more paint. And so, um, you know, that's, that's another thing. It's, it really, we can look at our mistakes as mistakes, or we can shift the way we look at them and see them as opportunities. Um, so that's what I choose to do, is get out of my head space I'm going to add that little detail uh, of my flower in there. And then I'm also going to add in my cone shape. Give her my petals. Get some of those details in there. All right. Our little daffodil is shaping up. We've got her in there. Oh, I know I love flowers too, Melissa. Do you have a favorite? Tell me if you if anybody has a favorite flower. Um, so the next thing, I'm gonna take out some green. I got a couple of greens here. I always like to use more than one green or any color that I'm using um, and mix it up and see what happens versus just using it straight out of the bottle or the two because it's really, really fun once you uh, play around with your colors and mix them. You don't have to know exactly, uh, you know, color theory to play around with your paints and see what they can do. Um, so I really encourage that. We do a lot of that in our paint challenges of um, just really letting yourself play and smush colors around and see what happens. Because the lovely thing about acrylics is that you can easily paint over them. Uh, you just let it dry. Oh, tulips. Yeah, tulips are a good one for sure. So I'm just going to start painting in my stem and my beautiful leaves here. We'll see where my shaky hand takes me today. So I either had too much coffee and not enough food in my belly, I think. And 
I'm just going to get my stem in. So if you are unable to look at your painting, if you see if you see a mistake and you're unable to shift into, okay, I'm just going to work with that, um, then I suggest, you know, just walking away, just taking a break. Give yourself a little bit of space to gain a new perspective. I've got my stem in. That can always help, but just walking away. Just like we need to do in life, right? Like, um, sometimes we just need to walk away from a situation or to gain some perspective. And it's just like that with our art. Um, sometimes we just need to walk away, let it dry. Sometimes we like to get in there and keep messing around. And that's when we get into our headspace, when we're just feeling like we got to get it perfect. Uh, but sometimes if you can just whew, say, hey, I'm going to walk away, take a, take a break, come back to it, and you can see it in a different light. Um, Katie says, my favorite spring flowers, I guess, are the daffodils and tulips. They're the first things to come. Oh, I know. In Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's so fun to see what comes up first. We have some crocuses, too. Um, I have not seen crocuses yet, but um, I know they're out there. I know they're getting ready to come up. So the last thing I want to do, I've got my leaves in. I probably I might come back in and do another layer um, to get that color in. And I just I want to um, do my background. So on this one I had fun. I did a blue, and then I really I wiped it away. And so that's what I'm going to show you right now. And um, some of that yellow will come through. And so I want to get a couple of my blues. I think what did I do with my blues? different blues. Just get those down. That one's running low. So really I love to get colors that I gravitate to. I'm going to put a little bit of white down too. I might mix a little bit of white in it to get that background. Just a lighter blue. And right. Just gonna start putting it down. I'm gonna go all around canvas, and I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Couldn't find them last minute. I was running around trying to find my glasses. So most likely, I will make some happy accidents here between my shaky hands <laughs> and not wearing my glasses. All right, so we're just gonna go around the edge. Just keep smushing. I got a little bit of that green in there. It's all right. It's okay. So I'm just taking the edge of that brush and I'm just going against that edge. You can turn your brush. Um, sometimes I just kind of like to get an edge and go swoop it down. Other times I'll take it and I'll go straight down and get that edge as well. So I'll show you that here. And it's good to hold it um, not so down here, which I kind of was getting close to that, but having it more holding a grip higher up on your paintbrush. Uh, I know it might feel a little scary, but it gives you more room to play and to have looser paintbrush strokes. We are all about the play. I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit with some water because I want to be able to see through. And then I'm also going to show you how I wipe away some of that paint. So I love layers and being able to see through. If you didn't want to see through this, you know, this is all, this is your canvas. This is your little daffodil. So if you didn't want to see the yellow coming through, you could either paint another layer of blue on top. I've been thinning this out a little bit, so that's why you can see down to the bottom. But I'm also going to 
pull some off in a second. Uh, or you could go in, uh, add a little bit of white to your paint and that'll make it a little bit more um, opaque so you won't be able to see through. So you really gotta follow your intuition, follow your heart and what you wanna see on the canvas. It's not about what anybody else thinks you should paint. This is about you having fun at the canvas. Just gonna get all the way in here, all the way around the edges. Get in there. And now I'm gonna play around a little bit. I'm gonna, I've got a paper towel. I'm gonna get a little damp. And then I just wanna play with this. Ooh, yeah. Play around. I can pull up as much or as little as I want. Oh, that's, I just love that. That just makes me happy. And if I came through and I was like, oh, I can see way too much yellow. Um, I wasn't, I didn't really want to pull up that much. Again, like you could just come back in with another layer. If you want. So for me, this smushing around and just playing, playing with the paint that's down on the canvas, it just makes my little fireworks go off inside me. So it's super fun. So then one last thing, well, I was probably gonna come back in and do, yeah, I'll do another little layer of green on my, on my uh, leaves. give them a little bit more depth. And then let's see if I can pull that off. Yeah. And then I have a really small pointed paintbrush and I'm going to use that just to add a little bit of depth with my flowers. I'll cover up a few. I like to see the black lines underneath. Give that a little bit of shading, a little bit of highlights. And we're just, it's just to get the effect. It's not, um, I'm going to turn this really quick. This is not realistic painting. This is to get the feel of what it could look like. So I'm not worried about being exact. Just doing some little highlights here. Let me give you a little closer up. There's my little daffodil. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Pass this on to your friends. Um, we're going to have so much more fun celebrating spring for the next 10 days. And um, if you'd like the exact step-by-steps for painting a canvas from start to finish, um, I've got a free tutorial you can download and the uh, link for that is in the description. And what will happen is once you enter in your email address, you'll get uh, instant access to a video for painting a canvas from start to finish and, and having fun and getting into the play process and really enjoying what you're painting. So go ahead and enjoy that free tutorial I have for you. And we will see you next time at the canvas. All right. Bye for now, everybody. Thanks for joining me. All right.